At its highest point, the proposed development at the old Eastern Beach public car park is set to climb a full 35 levels. That's 110 metres. Robert Mato, director of WSRM Architects, told the DPC this development will be a catalyst for future developments, the start of a new city district on the east side of the rock, much like Europort is on the west. He said the blocks would be highly visible for all driving into Gibraltar once the runway tunnel is active. Although it'll be a high-density development, the architects have tried for the visual impact to be positive, allowing air and views to move between slender, rounded towers. Mr Mato explained that the large number of apartments the government wants to build means Hassan centenary terraces have to be significantly taller than all other blocks on the rock. Minimising the footprint on the ground leaves space for the public to enjoy, he said. The construction has gone out to tender and it's expected that a contractor will be chosen soon. I think it's a significant project, not just for the government, but also for applicants who are waiting for flats. I mean, the reality is that um, Gibraltar is constrained by the amount of land that we have. Traditionally, land has come across to us from the Ministry of Defence when it's surplus to MOD requirements or it's been reclaimed from the sea. Those are the only two options that we have, so we are very limited in terms of the land that we have available. And the government took the view that the north side of the east side reclamation would be used to provide affordable housing. For her part, Dr Caroline Francis of environmental management company Jacobs talked about the environmental impact assessment. She said the project would have no significant transboundary effect. She acknowledged the major adverse impact on the Catlin Bay landscape character and said there'd be a minor adverse impact on the neighbouring World Heritage Site. She also said the height of the blocks would have a significant adverse impact in bringing upper-level winds down. She told the DPC the intention is that the spoil pit currently there will be cleared during construction. The affordable housing scheme has come before the Development and Planning Commission today for guidance and advice only. Government projects still do not require the permission of the DPC as the Town Planning Act is still not active. The new law has not come into effect. This despite the fact that in 2011 the GSLP Liberals pledged themselves in their election manifesto to subject all government projects to the full planning process. And that delay has led to frustration on behalf of the three NGOs represented in the planning process who today felt that they had to speak out. Um, the ESG Heritage Trust and GOMS would like to issue a joint statement on planning issues that the Hassan Centenary Terraces have flagged up with regard to government projects. Well, there has been consultation as there is um, in EIA processes for whether it's private or public projects. We are well versed with that. But um, we feel that in this case, um, the speed of that EIA and the feedback that was required from, from NGOs and all the, all the stakeholders has been quite accelerated in some cases, um, where um, in, our, in our case, for example, the Trust, we met consultants without having seen the plans beforehand. So it, also, it gives us very small windows to then to be able to give properly considered views and feedback into what is quite a, a mega project for Gibraltar. So small windows being, what, uh, weeks, days? Um, in one case for the environmental scoping, um, I think it was something in the region of 24 hours. Right. Uh, and, and, I mean, what would you like to see in place instead of that? Well, I think if, if government um, um, tied itself to the planning process, as in the new term plan, if that act was commenced, I think then the, the consultation windows would be a more um, set and, and practised in, in that sense. Our statement really was about the importance of, of um, government projects being sub subjected to the, the full planning process and, and a, fa a, f a fair playing field for everybody who comes to, to, to the DPC. Um, why this particular project? Well, of course, there are concerns regarding the scale of the project. And there are also, in particular, concerns regarding the precedent that, um, that a project of such a scale will, will set for the development of the remainder of that plot. Most of that plot will, will uh, still remain undeveloped. And uh, there are two important points to make here. The, the, the first is that none of our organisations, of course, are against uh, the provision of housing for Gibraltarians and, and for people who are resident here. Indeed, we're all in favour of it. 
Um, and uh, the, the second point is that uh, this is reclaimed land and this is land that will be developed, that has to be developed. But uh, we need to do so sensitively and um, we need to make sure that the, um, the first step that we take in developing this land does not set a precedent that we come to regret. Quite a few years now we've been aware that, that this area of Gibraltar is due for development and uh, we've had Sovereign Bay, we've had Blue Water projects that have uh, designed a, a, a planning scheme for the entire area, um, both very consciously trying to avoid major, the major impacts occurring on either side. This would be Eastern Beach and Catalan Bay Village. Um, and of course what's happened with this project is it's, it's a major departure, it's uh, two and a half times uh, the heights that were prescribed for the area before that in any case were going to be located towards the rear of the, of the plot. This is now protruding out to sea um, uh, at an angle that is you know, completely exposed to every um, viewpoint around Gibraltar and the beach, the upper rock. Uh, the EIA recognises this, that there's no mitigation uh, measures that can be taken to, to, to be done. The three NGOs that spoke out today highlighted that it's, the blocks are two and a half times taller than the previous planned blocks. Isn't this too tall? Look, tall, you cannot hide tall buildings, it's a, a fact, I mean, there are tall buildings and as long as perhaps the buildings are not located inside the city walls, they are built on the east side of Gibraltar where originally there were going to be tall buildings anyway, perhaps not to this site, but certainly there were tall buildings and also bearing in mind that this is affordable housing for people who cannot afford to live anywhere else, so there is definitely a market and there's a considerable amount of interest amongst the public for a residence for a flat in this type of development. So I think it is a tall building, yes, you cannot hide that, but it is perfectly legitimate to build tall buildings outside the city walls. We would recommend, if this development goes ahead, that the, that the strong recommendations are made to ensure that the remainder of the site has a master plan prepared for it. Today, the Development and Planning Commission has issued the government with advice on how to proceed on this major development. Construction is expected to start later this year and take approximately three years. And the committee today heard that that means that the project will very likely come back here for further consideration soon.